What's going on, Hoonigan viewers? Let me ask you this. Are you the type of person that winds up in a ditch sideways with a lot of people recording you on their phones? Do you perhaps own a C4 Corvette and drive it like it is an actual race car? So if you've got race car dreams, but more like a Mustang leaving a car show skill set, we've got the solution for you. Here at Hoonigan, we're offering you a chance you crows we're offering you a chance to win an all expense paid trip to skip barber racing school where you can learn how to not understeer or crash into things look tight as f where you can stop acting like you know how to drive and actually be able to drive. Here's how you enter. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Hoonigan. Sign up for a new subscription to Dollar Shave Club. Then go to hoonigan.com slash DSC. Follow the steps on that page. After that, you're done. But hurry, contest ends soon. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. I'm Larry Chen and I'm actually in the UK. This is my buddy, Kaiza. Hello again. Hey, so you guys have seen his work, whether you like it or not. Yeah, yeah. If you're a car nut, and if you have Instagram, most likely you've seen his stuff. Kaiza does something similar to what I do in that we both photograph cars, but he photographs cars in the digital space. And for me to be able to shoot a car, it actually has to exist in real life. Bummer, right? So you have to build it or you have to manufacture it or whatever. With Kaiza, he actually thinks of things in his head and then creates it in the digital world and he can put it into any background and he can shoot with any lens and all the bokeh and all that. How can I compete with that? No, no, no. <laughs> You can and you can't. <laughs> the, no, the, no. The, good... the, tr the, the truth is I can. But that's the thing is that's kind of why I respect your craft so much. Thank you. In that you just got to take it to the next level, right? Yeah. There's only so much we can do in the real world. Yeah. Might as well just push the limits of photography, push the limits of what cars could possibly be. Yeah. That's all good and done, but you actually have a car in the real world as well. I do. Right? And it's the only car you own. It's your daily driver. You drive it every day. This thing is awesome. It looks so good. It's your very, very, very clean, very cool FDR X7. Uh, yeah. So this has been my dream car from since I can remember, really. You know, playing Gran Turismo. Uh, cars, car games in general, but mainly I have Gran Turismo to thank for kind of pushing me in this direction. In my opinion, it's it's a timeless car, and there are so many things that you can do to it, which is also a blessing and a curse at the same time. But I knew I I, I wanted to get one, and you know, two years back I was able to, and I feel now it's at a stage that I'm quite happy with. It's tastefully modified. I do have something crazy planned for it. I do have a wide body plan for it. You play with cars and shapes and models and you're just kind of in that mindset all the time. Yeah. Like for your day job, all you do is design crazy and cool cars, body kits, all that. I did have a chance to feature your first ever SEMA build last year, which I was very happy about. The Live to Offend BMW E30. What a legendary build. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, it may not have the craziest motor or it may not be the craziest go fast build. But the point is that you're doing something different on a car that's existed for so long yeah. and that's had so many different uh, uh, takes, I guess, on the, in the modifying world. So why an RX-7? Like, is it something special about it that you like? So my all-time favorite car is the Mazda 787B. You know, Group C, Le Mans winner. The rotary engine, I think, is, is something very special. And, you know, in, in today's kind of world, we have hybrids, electric cars, you know, you have petrol, diesel, you know, all the usual piston engines. And I've always been attracted to the rotary engine in the sense of the noise it makes, you know, the power it makes. And a lot of people are afraid of them in terms of maintenance, but 
it's like any other old car, you know, if you check oil before you do long distances and check the heat, make sure the car is warm before you drive it, it's, it's great. And I've always been fascinated, I think, with how they work, which is why inevitably I ended up with one. <laughs> Just body styling, what it's been used for in the past. I, I love it, you know, Ari Memia, seeing the designs there kind of kick-started that love for this um, seeing it used in, in the drifting world and time attack and everything it just it helped me it helped push me in the right direction to eventually get one and I'm happy I managed to find a decent one <laughs> and what have you done in terms of outside body parts so this is a 92 spec FD which means it was quite it was fairly outdated it had um, the older gen around the spoiler so one of the first mods that I made was kind of getting a genuine 99 spec rear spoiler this actually came from Canada uh, from a friend in Vancouver because I couldn't find any here in the UK um, and it instantly changed the look of the car um, before this I was on 17s uh, Enkai wheels which the car came with uh, second mod, I would say, was the feed style side skirts. Instantly impacted the car in, in a great way. You know, I love it. I love it. It just, it, it just grounds it. Is it much harder for you to actually modify these cars in the real world versus the digital world? Because uh, in the digital world, you could just click this thing, change the color, add carbon fiber, do this, do that. <laughs> uh, I'm being attacked by a fly right now. Oh. But um, yeah, no, it's, I think it's just as equally as difficult, although you guys in the US, you have parts readily available. You know, you have Car Shop Glow and people that are distributing these parts so easily and readily available. Whereas for me to get parts here in the UK, it's a mission because I have to order from Australia, from the US or straight from Japan. And it's import tax added on that, shipping. So it makes getting parts a lot more difficult. What about this carbon fiber piece here? That actually really- so This is one of the, the recent additions. It's an Evo R rear ducktail or lip should i say it just it flows really well with the, the rear diffuser yeah um you know the two angles here so who and who makes the rear diffuser uh, rear diffuser is also re memia pro i think um styled front splitter is a yoras front splitter which not a lot of people run um roof spoiler origin labs carbon also there's a carbon theme going on here right. which I, I never intended on and you're really into the actual JDM parts too yeah so uh, and you got the blitz exhaust yeah <laughs> yeah that that came with the car um, I, I didn't ask for that but I'm grateful I have it tell me about the wheels these are 1552s correct so they are uh, which a lot of people don't really realize I've always been a, a, a huge fan of Matt and kind of how he works and presents himself, you know, as a company. He's always been a supporter of my work, which I love. Uh, I love people, you know, that support me. So I try and support them back. And um, I've always loved the BBS E88s, um, you know, on the Group C Le Mans car, the 787B, uh, they ran them. That car is an inspiration. The motorsport rings, which are really, really cool. Um, I can change these out. So they're usually used on race cars. So you can tell which side is left, which side is right. It makes changing wheels a lot easier. Um, but yeah, they, these are changeable as well. So I can just pop these out, pop new ones in, and it's a different look straight away. It does give that E88 vibe. Yeah. And uh, the gold with the red and the chrome lip is unbelievable. I debated over that uh, for a long time. I was originally gonna go with a black gloss lip and a black matte face, but red and gold is such a classic combo. And that's the kind of look I wanted to go with this. That's really what sets this car off, honestly. Plus that and the fitment is unbelievable. <laughs> like I, I'd, love to, I'd love to get a bit more out of this, but if I, if I kind of push this out even more, it compromises drive height. So yeah. I have to try and find a good balance between the two. And I'm not really running a lot of stretch either. So, you know, I mean, you see a lot of people with RXs, um, that are running a lot of stretch and you know their lip is coming out over over the fender here what about the brakes they actually look pretty good they're stock uh, brakes uh so these front brakes are from an mx5 i believe um a brand new set i i need to get brakes sorted and everything but it's not really been 
the, the biggest thing that worries me right now. It, it actually kind of matches it, it in does. terms of like yeah. the look as it well does. as the rotor it is, is matches pretty cool. I, I like it. We had the calipers painted red by my friend Matt here in the UK. And just to, just again, you know, offset. So tell me about the air suspension. Air suspension. So as it stands, I have a good relationship with Airlift, but they don't make kits for RX-7s. So um, my good friends over at Intermotive, um, Jonathan, who heads that company here in the UK, he put together a set of custom struts, custom bags, all 3D designed, CAD designed by himself and made by himself in his little factory in this, this corner of Surrey. Um, and he basically put, put together this kit for me, running airlift management, uh, 3P, and I love it. I, I debated so much whether I should get air. So much of it is about just the drivability that you've created with this. And it's amazing to see you drive this daily. <laughs> You drive it around London, you drive it around the UK, all over. Yeah, the interior is it's pretty stock, as you can see, yeah. stock seats. I don't know how I fit, um, but Jonathan also kind of custom made like uh, this little like, little pod. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It actually looks yeah. like it's supposed to be there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought make use of space that I never really used before. Otherwise that was like an ash, ashtray. Yeah. Renowned steering wheels, which is a bit smaller than the OEM wheel, so I can actually drive it very comfortably. Believe it or not, I do, I love it. I love driving the car. It's very comfortable, unless the drive is over two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> then my legs begin to suffer. So how tall are you? I'm six foot six, so. Six foot six. That, that's why I have to raise my arm every time I talk yeah. to you because you're eight inches taller than hey, I am. Hey Kaiser, how are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. You and I. Let's see how you get in. It's like a clown car. Pretty much, I just like lunge myself in, you know? And then, um, and then, yeah. I... Oh man, there's really no, like, there's no more room in there. There's no more room here. Yeah. Any taller than yeah. I feel like you wouldn't fit. No. How close are you to the top here? Oh, you have some head. Yeah, there's yeah. decent, 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 decent amount of room, yeah. you know. I sit quite low. <laughs> so you can't, you can't see my stuff. So. Yeah, no, I can't see you. <laughs> so what have you done to the motor? Um, so the motor, I bought this with a fresh engine rebuild. Hurt bought an automatic one of these for $7,000. I took a ride with him in it. Has some body damage, has a long way to go, but I'm actually looking forward to him building that. Yeah. This is this may give him some inspiration. I don't know if this will, because it's, no. it's fully stock, pretty yeah. much. Well, um, I bought this car with a fresh engine rebuild, which I think is the best time to buy an RX-7, because all you have to do is run the engine in, yeah. and then you can go and get it mapped. Um, so I don't really drive this car that hard at all. You know, I mean, I have to make it last, but this also has a large street port. So a twin turbo, 13B with a large street port. I think right now it's pushing around 310 brake horsepower. Hey, that's actually not that bad. I'm surprised. I need to get an Apex CFC and go get the car mapped so that it fuels better. Um, you know, and just kind of sorts engine management out a little bit better. You guys who follow Kaiser, who see his work, you guys see all the renders that he comes out with, the, just the insane ideas that he comes up with. You probably wonder, hey, what does this guy drive in real life? Well, here's your answer. This is what he drives in real life and it's pretty cool looking. Thank you. Yeah, so thanks for showing to us. My pleasure, it's, it's my pleasure. I mean, probably the next time you film this, it might be a bit crazier. <laughs>